Hi, Pam. Great to see you. Pam Maynard, CEO of Avanade. Hi, Pam. Hi, Lewis. Well, you know, we've always felt that we were a special organization or we had something quite special and unique in our culture at Avanade. Um, but it's that external recognition which has really helped to really validate it, that uniqueness and that specialness, if you like, and really strengthened for us or helped to strengthen and under, underscore our people first culture so much more. Um, when we were informed that Avenard had made the, the most loved workplace list, the reaction from most of our people was one of pride and gratitude and also massive excitement uh, because we really couldn't believe it, it just came as completely a, a, as a surprise. You know, we had thousands of people share the news as well on LinkedIn and other social channels. And it was so inspiring to see them share their own personal stories as well in terms of what it meant for them to be part of Avenard and what they believed, you know, it made, they believe, believe made Avenard a great place to work. Um, and how that actually provides and leads to a sense of belonging you know, in the organization. So our, our ranking in terms of the most loved workplace list is certainly an achievement. It's one that we've shared and it's one that's really helped to underscore that people first culture and the why of that people first culture for us. Well, there's so many, there's so many, um, so, so many things I can talk about here, and especially as I'm hugely passionate about this topic as well. You know, today, we have 52,000 skilled em uh, employees across 80 cities and 26 countries, uh, and our people have more experience than any other you know, systems integrator around uh, Microsoft technologies in the market. And I look back on our history as well. You know, we're now sort of over 20 years old. And you know, just in terms of answering your question, three things stay top of mind for me. One, it's about uniting the organization behind a common purpose. Two, it's staying true and very focused on our culture of innovation. Um, and then lastly, it, it really is uh, all about a commitment to really raising the bar in the technology industry around inclusion and diversity. And so if I just go a little deeper on those three, from a purpose perspective, one of the first things that I did when I came into role was really to solidify our company's purpose, which is to make a genuine human impact with the work that we do. Now, our people told us really loudly that they, they want to know that what they are doing for our clients is making a difference in the world. And it isn't just about the technology and it isn't just about bottom line results. They wanted to know that we were having real human impact. And it's that purpose that inspires us to look beyond the technology and at the human impact. You know, for example, the work that we did at the onset of the pandemic, helping the NHS, the National Health Service here in the UK to use technology to rapidly produce ventilators um, you know, as part of a consortium during the pandemic or working with nonprofits, which is a big part of what we do now, you know, working with, for example, an organization like UNICEF to increase the effectiveness of fundraising, again, so critical over the last 20 months, or even the partnership we've established with the World Health Organization, helping them to develop uh, a digital platform which provides greater access to healthcare data, again, becoming hugely important over the last 20, 20 months or so. Um, and also, you know, in terms of bringing the purpose to life and going beyond the work that, you know, the, the work that we do, um, it, it, it just in terms of our clients, it also embedding that into the culture. Um, and so an example there was what happened in Avenard uh, when George Floyd was murdered, you know, we led a series of employee-led discussions around systemic racism and discrimination that attracted over 700 of our employees and gave also gave everybody in the company the day off to reflect and grieve 
uh, when it, on, on actually on the day of his funeral. When the pandemic hit as well, we uncapped the volunteering hours. So we allow our employees to, to volunteer. We lifted the cap on the number of hours so that people, our people could really support others around them, you know, doing simple through simple acts of kindness or you know, work in the community. Um, those were you know, two things that also become really, really important. When I think about innovation, innovation has run through the DNA of Avenard for as long as we've been around, so since 2000. Um, and we're really, really committed to have innovation at the heart of everything we do and continue to stay committed to evolving what that means as, as we evolve as an organisation. I don't think, you know, I could get much of an argument that in today's world, the speed of change, you know, there's only one speed and that is incredibly fast in terms of when it comes to technology change. And our clients are just demanding more and more in terms of technology evolution or technology innovation in their businesses, helping them to invest in areas which suddenly, you know, through the last couple of years, has been a real light shone in terms of any technical debt or opportunity to harness more innovative technologies like data and AI to capture new customers. Um, and, and or even around security and privacy strategy. So having innovative ideas and offering innovation, even as a service for clients, has become really important, you know, as our clients look forward and plan for the future. And one of the things that we had to react to is actually being able to pivot our innovation activities, which we do. So we normally do in-person um, uh, innovation competitions and an in-person innovate fest. We had to pivot that very quickly to running those virtually. So you know, preserving, if you like, that focus on innovation through the last 20 months has been really key. We've been able to do that by pivoting very quickly to virtual events. Um, still having clients at the centre of those events as well has been very important. Um, and therefore, you know, for our clients, you're know, really helping them as well on that innovation journey. And then lastly, around inclusion and diversity. Um, and for as long as I can remember, uh, uh, yeah, both in, in terms of my career in technology, which is actually quite long now, and also my time at Avanar, the technology industry has really struggled to attract more women uh, into STEM careers, more diverse talent into careers in technology. And as one of few black female CEOs in the industry, I really do feel a personal responsibility to leave the industry in a much more inclusive and diverse way than I found it, which is why, you know, we've made it a priority to build an inclusive and diverse team at Avenard, which starts, starts with gender and race, but goes way beyond that. And we're really proud of um, the progress we've made, made and also the investments that we've made as well. So we've appointed our first chief diversity and inclusion officer um, dedicated to dedic provided dedicated support to our numerous employee networks now and uh, brought on leadership and development programs to help our leaders become more inclusive leader uh, inclusive leaders and also looked at how we acquire talent how we attract and acquire and bring talent into the organization and looking at how we can remove bias in those processes as well we've got metrics that measure and tell us that we're making progress and we've really bolstered as i say um, training resources and then we're also rolling out gender transition leave so expanding the efforts at the regional level with programming as well that focuses on neurodiversity hiring and then also ensuring social justice so a lot going on without within Avanard I say it's those three things which have been pivotal to making us the most loved workplace. So in terms of um, you know love for our employees as a top priority for the leadership I mean, I would first answer the question um, by saying that our people truly are, you know, what makes Avenard, Avenard. Uh, it really, really is all about the people. I'm certain you can sense that just from the conversation that we are having. And when our people feel loved, when they have a sense of purpose, when they feel they can be authentic and they belong, there's nothing, I truly believe there is nothing that we can't accomplish as a business, as a company. Um, one of my favorite authors, wouldn't surprise you, is Brené Brown, who talked about the fact that true belonging 
doesn't require you um, to change the person that you are. It requires you to be who you are. And as leaders, we have a responsibility. I feel we have a responsibility to ensure that our teams know uh, and feel that they can belong um, and that what they do really matters. And I know I'm not alone when I say that the last 20 months or so has been transformative, both personally and professionally for so many people and for me included. It's also underscored the importance as well of the emotional, mental and physical well-being you know, of the people that we lead. At the onset of the pandemic, my first instincts very much, and I was only six months into my role at that time as well, so I'd only been appointed as CEO six months previously. You know, my instinct was you know, just to make sure that, that you know, we were taking care of the health and well-being of our organization, our team globally, where they were if they were where they needed or wanted to be, you know, to see out the lockdowns that were evolving or taking place around the world. Um, and, uh, you know, so, and then it was, you know, very quickly then I could, and my leadership team could start to shift to helping our clients. We knew that our people had to be in the right place to enable us, you know, to continue to serve our clients uh, and make that transition to working remote effective. And it was critical that our te- for our team as well, um, that we understood, you know, or they understood that we were going to take care of them. They had that confidence um, in us as a leadership team, as we were all went through, and they especially went through that period of uncertainty. And so we hosted global and regional webcasts, town hall conversations, to outline the approach that we were going to be taking as a business, which included removing some of the chargeability pressures from our consulting teams, you know, and reassuring them that we were giving them the time to sort out and get some level of balance between you know working at home and that blend that happened to all of us of our personal and professional lives you know, through the pandemic last year as well we really focused on offering a differentiated employee value proposition which outlines the promises that we make to our employees you know, around for example limitless learning distinctive experience ambitious growth you know and also the opportunities we provide through our workplaces um, and the things that, you know, therefore make us unique and our employees can see, make us different, you know, to, to, to enable them, you know, as people to want to spend their careers or more of their, a chapter of their careers at Avanard. Now, it's safe to say that we're not going to be going back to the way we were at the point I was appointed as CEO back in September 2019. Um, you know, needs are different. We need to respond differently to the different programs. Your demands of employees are different, which is why we have to put them front and center. And, you know, I really do believe just here to finish on this point that fostering that sense of belonging and that culture that where people come first, you know, also makes good business. At Harvard Business Review, I'm certain you've heard and seen their research where they talk about and purpose and profit tend to go together. And if a company has a strong purpose, a galvanizing purpose for its employees, employees will feel a greater sense of belonging, sense of engagement, and will bring stronger impact into their into their roles and their jobs. And that study you know, also concluded that a more engaged employee workforce you know, would be a more productive one, as we all know, and therefore you know, would, those companies would outperform outperform the market by five to seven percent per year so the two go together you're putting um you know, employees front and center putting people first um you know in turn you know brings really good results you know and outcomes from a human dimension for your, for our people but then also you know great business results as well Pam Maynard, thank you so much for joining us. You've been wonderful and you're doing so many incredible things that are so important. Over 50,000 employees working across the globe, doing trend setting work. You're really wonderful. Thank you for, uh, for joining us today. It's been wonderful, Pam. Thank you. And thank you very much for having me. And thank you again for the recognition. You're welcome.